Yes. Yeah. 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 Sit up. Am I hair good? Yes. Let's tickle my teeth. A little bit. This is gonna oh. actually like right in the middle. <laughs> this is gonna make it on the blooper reel. Yeah. Hot. I know, right? <laughs> All the boys. Oh. They look a little look at them lining up, see them? Wow. I know, such a long <laughs> line. So long. Good? Yes. Okay. Booful. Hey y'all, it's Comic Girl Cosplay here. I'm gonna be taking through the masquerade experience. So here's the beginning of the experience. Um, we're just in the green room right now. So spin. <laughs> Slowly spin. Yeah, yeah. Hey! So this is the first and most important part of a masquerade. This is the thing you're going to be doing for the majority of the time. It is sitting and waiting. Now, I did my uh, registration online. That was an option this time around. Usually the first thing you would do would be to register in the morning and to provide your music to them. But since I registered online, that's already been taken care of and I don't need to worry about that yet. So we're in the green room right now and I just wanted to explain something. These are dens. As you can see, this is den one. Dens are essentially just groups where the cosplayers are divided. Generally, it's done by division. As you can see, we have another den here, another den here, and we have a fourth den right here. So these dens will help divide the cosplayers, and this helps the judges and the organizers just keep all the cosplayers organized. Um, oftentimes, these the dens will go one by one on stage, starting with den one, moving their way on towards the other dens. Um, so it's a really helpful system. However, unfortunately, if you're looking to sit with some of your friends who may be in another den, that's not always a feasible thing. Number 16, I need to get a photo. So this is Crystal. She's the masquerade organizer. She's doing an awesome job. I haven't gone crazy yet. Yay! This is her first time organizing. She usually judges, and she does such a super good job. So right now, what she's doing is she's just going around, and she's um, telling everybody what number they are, what den they belong to, and she's getting them ready for photos, and then once they're done with the photos, they go into judging. She is a den mother. So essentially what den mothers are is there's usually one assigned per each den, and they go around and they help you out. She was super nice and she offered to bring water, which is really nice. Uh, den parents will help you with any needs you may have like that. And they'll also help direct you when it comes time for the actual competition. So I'm here with Miss Messy Mia and with Nick, AKA Detailed Illusion Cosplay. They are gonna be our super awesome MCs for today. Hopefully super. Yeah, it's our first time <laughs> seeing. So we're but you guys are super awesome people. So like, I mean, the MC part should come Thank you. Part. We'll see. Our task is of introducing all the lovely cosplayers that are here today. So we get to go see everyone, make sure that we're saying the right things and pronouncing it right, things like that, because Japanese is hard. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. People's names are hard. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and like. I you would think sometimes it's easy, but I know people mispronounce my name sometimes. It's a three-letter name, yeah. so... My. The struggle is real. The, the struggle, struggle is, is real. very real. Yeah, so, I'm probably going to butcher every single person's <laughs> names and feel awful about it, but we're going to try. We're going to try really hard. Yes. So what you do when you go to register, oftentimes, if you haven't done your paperwork online like I did, you'll oftentimes go up to the, M uh, to the MCs, let them know if there's anything in particular, uh, let them know any pronunciations, anything like that. And they generally are really awesome people. And I know for a fact these two are epically awesome. All right, see you guys later. So this is Hannah. She's actually acting as um, one of the backstage helpers. So she just came by to ask if I needed um, any stage ninjas. And you're acting as a stage ninja as well. Yeah. Or, so do you want to just talk about a bit about what stage ninjas are? Uh, stage ninjas are actors or people who come up on stage with the uh, cosplayers and just help them with their act, with their fighting scene or dancing scene or whatever they're doing pretty much. Yeah. And uh, cosplay ninjas are actually only popular in some of the Quebec and Ontario conventions. Most other conventions don't actually have stage ninjas as an option. And she also came around to ask about the audio, so the timing of the audio when uh, when I get on stage or before I get on stage when I want the audio to start. All right, thanks so much, Hannah. You're welcome. That's so excited. Hey guys. So we're still just hanging out in our den. With music, partying. We got music and dancing. Hey guys. And awesome costumes. Ain't nothing like a costume party, all right? Yeah, man. Time. So, like I said before, honestly, just waiting around is 95% of green room time. If you guys had any masquerade advice for people who have never done masquerade before, what would it be? Wait. 
Yeah, for free. Nice free. <laughs> That's a good one. When you go for judging, start from your head, work down. Or start from down, work up. That's good, so that way you don't miss anything. Do you have any advice? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good answer. Be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah, be fun. yourself. Fun. There you go. Have fun. 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 Totally do that on stage. It was my last masquerade ever. I totally do that to piss all the people off. We're like, we're not allowed glitter, screw you. Oh yeah, glitter's not allowed. Yes. So that's another thing about masquerades. Nothing that can actually dirty the stage. Um, I eat glitter, I eat confetti, anything like that can't be used. Anything you have with you must be brought off with you. Um, obviously it's a slipping hazard for anybody who goes after you, so they don't allow it whatsoever in masquerades. So I just got called for judging. Let's go for judging. Hello, hello. Hello. That's funny that I got you Okay. So when you go in for judging, first thing they're gonna ask you a few questions. Always have reference photos on you because it helps ask them. you quick because we have about five minutes to get the rest of everybody else. Oh God. Okay. So if you can talk fast. Uh, okay. Um, Artisan. Yes. Artisan number. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Perfect. Reference. Hit you with that. I use this one mainly just because it's the actual design artwork. And you can, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually see from all angles. <laughs> one thing I want to make a note of: if you see on the stage that my shoes there's white showing underneath, it's because you can see them that there's white. Yeah. Okay. Um, so essentially, every single thing I did, I drafted the patterns from scratch. Okay. Um, the dress itself is mainly boning, and it's actually because it defies gravity, as you see in the picture. Yep. I do have um, a little, I call it a butt pillow, just to kind of help out the no, boning a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I continued on with the flyers. I also made the pleated skirt. I kept all the materials consistent. It's like all the exact same, same rather than okay. And the back part, since it's not actually a proper person. Yep. Actually, just um, a series of invisible bra straps and with diagonal uh, vinyl, which is what I used to do the rest of the trip. Is really everything is hand made. Everything is hand cut. Um, it's all vinyl covered in that. Okay. Um, so all this is all. Is this craft foam? This is craft foam, okay. vinyl underneath, covered in the same spandex, just because I wanted everything yeah. to look consistent. The gems themselves are actually made out of air-dried foam, and I actually painted them using nail polish, so they'd have the gem like finish, and they kind of give like a resiny look to it. Um, the puff sleeves, same idea. I actually emphasized it because if you look in the photo, they're not like cutaways. No touching. No touching. They're not actually cutaways. Puff sleeves, like yeah, I mean it's very confident. Okay. Um, so I made sure that was done as well. And uh, I did, I similarly, I used all the same crack so that the color was all consistent. So I used the off-white crack to do the little side, um, side wings as well. And I also use the same craft foam to actually add texture to the bow. Because if you look at the bow itself, it's not actually thick. Oh, you did And they reference photo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it actually only indents where the green is, not where the black is. So unfortunately, I have to color that in. I was a little disappointed. And also, um, one thing with the painting, it actually does, it's not one flat color. Okay. So yeah, I had to paint it, yeah. It's got the green in there. So I did the same there, added the texture with the craft foam, used gems, I did the same method for the gems. Used the craft foam so it's all consistent coloring, as well as with the hair clips as well. And then just bobby pinned or clipped in? Yeah, so what I did was I did uh, two X's, like an X in the back of bobby oh, pins, okay. so that it would be double secure attached to my head. And there's just a little vinyl on the top. And the leaves are foam the, as well? The boob, yeah, it's foam covered in the bridal Satin. Okay. And then, yeah. Awesome. And there's little vinyl bottles. Okay. So I am craft foam, vinyl, taffeta, satin, and painting. Did you do the patterns yourself? Yeah, I drafted all the patterns myself. Um, just because they're such a specific, um, like if you look at the shape at the back and everything, it's so specific that there's no way I could have. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, and the necklace once again is made out of the same satin, um, craft foam, same kind of gem. Um, I did the necklace. It looks a bit smaller on here. If you look in certain nitrous, right, it's always different depending yeah. on. 
Yeah, um, it's actually bigger. I actually did it to scale. Okay. And I mean, it looks a little more humanistic this way. And uh, I also over top here because if you look at the necklace, you can see there's little diamonds. Yeah, you can see there's actually little diamonds on it. I initially did it with black thread and green thread, and it just looked too standoffish. So I did it with white thread, and I actually used pencil just to shade it. Okay, awesome. Sweet. All right, I think we're good. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Right. Nope, take it from right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, and that's what judging is essentially. Except for usually there's all four judges at once, but they only got five minutes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna group you by five or six with your entry numbers. So I would like you guys to set up into group from entry with, the first one's gonna be with the juniors and, so one, two, three, four, five. But we're probably groups of five. Yeah. We're gonna take you, we're gonna line you up at the door here. It's literally around this corner. Is going to bring you right to the stage, and then you're going to go on and come off the other side and come back through these doors here. While you're on stage, there is a line of tape on the stage. If you see that line, do not cross it because you will fall on your face. Why? <laughs> it's going to be the edge of the stage. So do not cross the tape. <laughs> the stage is actually higher than the floor. <laughs> so if you don't want to kiss, the, if you don't want to kiss the carpet, please pay attention. <laughs> Anything else? Has everyone talked oh. to the MCs? Yeah. Everyone has done everything. Talk to the MCs. Did you talk to the ninjas if you need it? Because now is the time. And also take off your badges before you uh, go on stage. Uh, your wristbands. Your wristbands. Wrist it's pretty. It's this. No. If yeah, you can flip it off, have a badge. Take it off. Yeah. If you have wristbands, try to try to hide them if you can, as most as possible. Um, also, guys, guys, please, when you come back from your uh, from your performance on the stage, we just ask you if you want to pick up your stuff and leave right after, because we don't know, we don't have anything here to retain you. So there, there will be no streaming. You you cannot see the show from here. And you are free to go into yeah. the next room and watch the rest of the show. Just make sure you don't forget anything here before leaving. Yeah, yep. of course, it's made for this. <laughs> Most importantly, have fun. Woo! Woo! So that was the pre-masquerade little <laughs> spiel, just explaining the ground rules and all that stuff. That means it's time to start lining up soon. Artisan divin uh, division. Artisan divinity. Hmm. Artisan division. Grand Archer Rena. Rena is an elf living in the mortal world. Her place in this world is jeopardized by the weakening of El, the power gems that energize everything, including the connection to her homeworld. If this power fades, the ties that bind the two planes will vanish, as will Rena herself. You called me over? Yes. Welcome, Rena. What's the matter? As we have suspected, the power of El weakens. So it has. If it continues to drain, it will soon crumble to dust. How do we stop it? I am ready for instructions. North of here, you will find a small village called Ruben. There, you will find the Tree of El, and with it, our only hope. Understood. We will seek the Tree of El immediately. Forgive me, but this you must do alone. It is a dangerous task that only you are equipped to handle. Understood. I accept my mission. Oh, I have finally found it. I just hope I'm strong enough to complete my mission. All right, so it is the morning Good after. Morning. It's Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning after the masquerade. Masquerade, uh, the award ceremony usually happens in the morning after because judges need time to deliberate. So I'm here again with Crystal, and she's just going to tell us a little bit about what judges look for and how they judge your performance and outfit. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, when we do the judging at night, we, we start with uh, the top scores and we decide our best in show from there and then we go by category and choose our best in each class. Uh, sometimes there isn't a best in class, it's only when we find there is someone that deserves it and it's based on their presentation and their workmanship. Uh, from there we just sort of give awards to anyone we think deserves something and we get to call it whatever we want. Awesome, thanks so much Krista! No problem! Woo woo! Good job, you guys. <laughs>
Can I get you to grab my camera? Just because oh, yeah. it's my... So, artisan. Can you actually... In workmanship, we have the best fabric detailing to the Grand Archer Rena. Yay! Yeah, girl! Let me sit down. For best finishing, number 21, Wings of Memory.